Now, in the beginning, I said that uh, accelerator is nothing but a microscope and uh, why it is so and what kind of things are required. For example, uh, here it is given on the left hand side that uh, the resolution is inversely proportional to the momentum and uh, which is uh, inversely proportional to the root E and at low energies and at high energies it is proportional to 1 by E. Now, if you, so that means if it is high energy, you can get better resolution and therefore you can, you will be able to study much smaller dimensions. For example, these are some of the things uh, which are uh, given here that if you want to study this, uh, uh, this kind of dimensions, for example, if you want to study one millimeter kind of things, then you need uh, uh, and uh, energy, kinetic energy of the particle which is of the order of 10 to the minus 4 electron volts. That is good enough. And if you want to uh, study the, you want to have resolutions of micron size, then you have to go to about 0.1 electron volts. Similarly, uh, if you want to uh, have the resolution of 10 to the minus 18 meters, then the energy required is, uh, energy of the particle required is 10 power 11 electron volts and which is about roughly about 100 GeV. And for uh, particles of uh, 10 power minus 20 meter, that means 20 minus 10, 18 uh, centimeter, you need this kind of energies and which are of the order of 10 TeV. And therefore, if you want to find out uh, what is the uh, uh, substructure of quarks, then you will need uh, energies which are higher than this. And these are shown here. Even to study the quarks, you can see which are the dimensions of this type and the energy required will be in TV, uh, uh, several GV energies. And that is why when the quarks were discovered, the energy of the energy of the uh, electrons were of the order of 30, 30 to 40 GeV kind of things. Now, uh, where we have gone it uh, is uh, you can say these quarks actually they are, uh, what are the properties and uh, there are six types of quarks which have been uh, discovered and uh, they are uh, called uh, uh, up, down, charm, strange, top and bottom. These are the six quarks, up, down and they come in pair, up, down, charm and strange. So these two come in together and this charm and strange come together and top and bottom. Now these are some of the parameters. Now you, you see here, this is very interesting that uh, up quark is 2 by 3 plus of electron, here you can see that up. they are fractional charges and the down is uh, minus 1, 3, 1 by 3, so you can see here. So if you put these things, then proton consists of U, U, D, because proton has charge 1, unit 1, and therefore U, U, D, you can have 2 by 3rd plus 2 by 3rd, minus is here. And uh, that is why you get uh, 1. Ne neutrons are uh, neutral and therefore charge is 0, net charge is 0. And uh, therefore they are made up of U, D, D and that is equal to uh, 2 by 3rd. That means there is one up quark that is 2 by 3rd minus 1 by 3rd that is D and minus 1. So that becomes a neutral particle. So proton is having a positive charge, is a positively charge and charge is uh, plus 1 while the neutron is uh, neutral that is charge is 0 and that is why they are uh, made up of these up up and quarks uh, like this. So these are some of and this top quark is the heaviest is uh, you can see the mass is, uh, is heaviest is 172 GV and this was discovered at Fermi lab accelerator uh, tevatron, uh, when the proton with anti-proton beam collided and uh, the mass was measured to be about uh, 172 GV. This is the heaviest particle.
now this uh, now you will be wondering can of course now the technology has developed and therefore uh, you can have high energy particles but what was happening earlier earlier also lot of good physics was done and uh, even without uh, these high energy uh, accelerators so uh, what were the sources of high energy particles so you can see that although theoretically in the right in the beginning of 19th 1905 the einstein gave this equation and dirac actually predicted antimatter and the uh, pi mesons were uh, predicted in 1935 but the source of uh, studies for uh, particle physics or uh, doing the experiment was that time it was cosmic rays and cosmic rays have uh, energies right from very small energy electron volt to up to tv they are all available particle and uh, uh, there are different kind of particles are available for example in 1932 itself uh, the positron which is a anti particle of electron was uh, discovered and later on pi mesons were discovered in 1937 so uh, people were able to get all this information using the cosmic rays uh, ions and uh, uh, cos in cosmic rays the particles of all energies are available now uh, here i have talked about the anti protons and pi mesons so uh, one question obviously will come is that can you produce or can you get accelerated anti protons in the lab of course uh, of course the answer is yes but you have to accelerate particles to appropriate energies and appropriate particle then only you can do for example if you collide two protons like in lab uh, in the in the lsc then the, then the you cannot simply make uh, it is not possible suppose two uh, you two protons interact with each other then you cannot simply make uh, one anti proton and one this is not allowed this is not allowed and the reason being that uh, for example if you take the charge then charge is one here so it is one so it becomes two and charge of this is anti proton is minus 1 so it becomes zero so the charge is not conserved so that reaction is not allowed so that is why we have two protons collisions and we have p plus p and then this now if you want to have this four particles then the energy conservation says that you need higher energy that is why this anti protons p bar is created at a minimum energy of about 5.3 gv and uh, that is how this uh, so this is not allowed you have to have this reaction and uh, that will be possible only at higher energy so one needs highly energetic beam of particles to break the nucleus and study the constituents that is a fundamental things at high energy new particles can be produced and that comes from the einstein equation uh, mc square and uh, this has been done at uh, for example uh, large hadron colliders uh, which is in geneva switzerland where two protons of mass uh, 1 gv each collide interact with each other and even the particles like uh, higgs bosons were produced which has a very large mass so you can see that accelerators can do wonders and uh, in different fields now let me just talk about little bit of physics of uh, these accelerators so when the when the uh, 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 any charged particle is uh, either traveling or uh, through this uh, ele electromagnetic forces uh, electromagnetic fields then there will be force acting on it and both electric and magnetic field will be uh, uh, applying some force on that in electric field force part will be in the same direction while the magnetic force uh, this will be b cross v that means the force will be perpendicular to both velocity as well as magnetic field and that is this is the principle this is the force which is used in cyclotrons and uh, synchro cyclotrons and uh, uh, so you can uh, get this and you can get details of this for example the rate at which the work can be done 
on the ion is given by here and uh, uh, sorry this has to be only this portion as this is zero and only this force will be there first one which is e times so uh, here again the, we have classified the accelerators in different categories earlier based on type of ions and uh, and uh, uh, and the whether the particle is heavier or not and things like that there is another category whether the acceleration is uh, is due to electric field or it is because of uh, magnetic field as well for example uh, uh, rate of change of magnetic field can be used for accelerating charged particles particularly electrons in the case of beta tron accelerators so if it is a, a static magnetic field then it will not be accelerating it will only be deflecting the particle but if the b is changing with time then you will find that uh, uh, that can accelerate the particles also uh, because there will be uh, gradient accelerating gradient will be so basically then you can see that there are two categories one is that uh, there is a static field which is given here and the a uh, second term will be zero here in this case and the acceleration uh, by dc accelerate uh, the uh, dc voltages uh, will be done and uh, there are different types of accelerators in this category which is uh, as i said that for nuclear low energy nuclear physics experiment is the uh, most useful one and they can be seen here that uh, they are in uh, initially in the early uh, late 20s the first one which came was uh, cockroft walton type of uh, um, multiplier which will which were convert into accelerators then later on the uh, things for technology was improved and the van de graaff accelerator electrostatic generators were uh, uh, developed and then the further improvement led to uh, building of tandem and peloton accelerators they all have different characteristics which i will be discussing and of course the dynamotrons and uh, they are basically all electrostatic accelerators so in this case category, category uh, I, i have said that uh, if uh, if the rate of change of magnetic field is used for accelerator acceleration then that accelerator is called beta tron and if you are using changing electrostatic field then they are called resonating because you have to resonate the the, the um, particles with the actual frequency and the phase etc and they are called uh, cyclotrons in this category these accelerators come into picture they are they are the ones which are so this is basic uh, background for the accelerators and uh, i have told you that uh, uh, why accelerators are important and why they are required what they can do and what we can gain from them and now let us uh, see that how useful are these uh, dc accelerators they are normally low energy accelerators but they are uh, their energy resolutions are much better than the other ones and therefore the for certain kind of studies they are much better than the in this category let me just uh, talk about uh, how the they, they are functioning uh, or how their work uh, principle is in world and in this category there are three kind of accelerators uh, which have been used and the first one is uh, let's say this just i explain the how it is working suppose this in the beginning also i have explained there suppose there are two plates and uh, i connect a battery here which is uh, this portion is positive and this is negative uh, so that means this plate is uh, negative and this is positive and then you uh, uh, you inject a positive ion which is having a charge of q plus then they will be this these ions positive ions will be attracted by this second plate which is uh, at ground potential these particles reach to this second plate the energy gain will be q times voltage 
So this is the basic principle of this. Uh, so it's, but the improvement of that is uh, Cockroft Walton. Uh, so this act also like a like a capacitor. So if you if you can have several capacitors and you have uh, instead of this DC voltage, you can have AC voltage and uh, uh, you use a, another circuit which is called uh, uh, which has both capacitors and diode then the voltage can be much higher and you can see here that using this uh, 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 techniques people were able to go uh, to uh, higher uh, voltages and one to about 1.5 million volt could be achieved with this. Now uh, this cockroach Walton type they were all open air open air type and therefore if you try to go to higher voltage there will be uh, breakdowns and uh, we will not able to go to higher voltages while this could be this problem could be overcome in the Wendycraft type of accelerators where this whole accelerator is enclosed in a in a pressure vessel and uh, that is uh, a insulating gas is put inside that pressure vessel at higher pressures which could uh, which Im improve the dielectric constant and therefore we were able to extend the higher voltage on the on the terminal or the point of high voltages which could be, which was different from the other ones here for example in the case of uh, cockroach walton you are using condensers or uh, capacitors directly while in the case of van de graaff and uh, pelotons the capacitor is made by the electrodes uh, by uh, so they are made there itself uh, some high voltage terminal acts as a capacitor in that uh, case so that has to be charged so it is technology is slightly different now uh, coming back to this accelerators uh, what are the uh, what are the components involved basically now we are talking about this i have explained earlier but the few components which are required of course is a source of charged particles then there has to be accelerating tube because uh, inside which we have to uh, accelerate the particles so and uh, if uh, we don't have a very high vacuum inside the accelerating tube then these particles will uh, collide with the, all the gas particles in the tube and they will lose the energy. So not only the uh, energy will be lost but also the, also the resolution of the beam will be because then there will be a spectrum of energy rather than one energy, single energy. And therefore you have to have a very high vacuum in this one uh, to avoid the energy loss etc. Now this, uh, this source has to be isolated from the other uh, this source and this and that is what is done by the high voltage column section or the accelerating tube across which we maintain the electric field and that provides the force to accelerate them to the high energy so the beam which is coming at this point is accelerated beam and of course the, as I mentioned earlier that uh, many times, sometimes it is focused beam, but many times it is a defocused beam, and uh, that has to be focused. So here, you have to put the beam hand handling components like uh, focusing devices and so on. Ultimately, we want to take the beam to the target chamber where the experiments will be are done, and therefore uh, that is the ultimate. Now, what is the criteria? See, ultimately, and actually, I was mentioning that in the co uh, uh, cockroach Walton type, you can go maximum up to 1.5 million volts. What is that? Is there any study? And uh, Kilpatrick uh, uh, studied these phenomena very nicely, and he came with a criteria, and that is uh, that tells us that uh, uh, at what voltage the breakdown will take place what maximum voltage you can go which of course voltage means the gradient and that is more important than so the Kilpatrick like uh, he he gave the criteria after the 
empirical uh, criteria based on lot of his studies and uh, above that voltage he gave that at what voltage the breakdown will take place above that voltage the plasma will form or the discharge will form and voltage will not be able to go so in the uh, all these accelerators there is a limit to which the voltage can go above that there will be discharge and in this uh, kind of accelerators for example uh, normally normally the safe limit to for operation of these accelerators is about 1 million volt per meter of course uh, uh, in open air it is much smaller but by using very efficient uh, insulating gas like sf6 which has a dielectric constant of about 2.5 times that of uh, air at the same pressure you can go to higher pressure and still you are able to go to 1 million volt per meter so for example if you take uh, 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 14 million volt peloton then the length of that accelerator is almost like uh, 14 meters so the gradient is limited to safe gradient is limited to about 1 million volt or something like this now any accelerator which you develop Uh, has to have uh, applications and they have to be used uh, and one of the excellent uh, one of the most fruitful application of uh, even the small accelerators like cockroach walton was to generate the neutrons and uh, there what you do is that you uh, accelerate neutrons bombard on another neutron target it could be the target could be gas or it could be different kind of targets so if you do that then you have to see that to what voltage you have to achieve what we have voltage you have to achieve and the, what is the energy required and that will be defined by the q value so if the q value is positive then the, even at very low energies the neutrons will be produced for example if you take this dd reaction then the you are able to get 2 mbb beams 2 mbb neutron beams and uh, that is because the q value of this is 2.7 mbb and this 2 mbb 2.7 mbb will be uh, distributed on these particles as per the mass and uh, the other uh, other reaction which is uh, very popular even today is dt reaction and in dt reaction when deuton beam of about uh, let's say few hundred kv to uh, up to 1 mbv or even high uh, is bombarded on tritium target then the helium is uh, produced and uh, uh, a neutron will come out of it and that neutron will be 14 mbv because the q value is 17.6 mbv and that will be distributed to this uh, as per the kinematics uh, between these two particles so the energy of this uh, helium kinetic energy of helium 4 will be 1 by 5 and uh, of the neutrons it will be 4 by 5 so that is why you get 14 mbv and uh, this is one of the best ways to produce one of the unique ways to produce 14 mbv mono energetic neutrons which are even today so even these new uh, these particles they are uh, uh, these accelerate accelerated particles from any of these dc accelerators even cockroach walton type of things are used for many many applications some of them are listed here and they are used in solid state physics ion beam modification of materials atomic physics ion beam analysis of materials like the rutherford batten scattering particle induced x ray emission is called pixc particle induced gamma ray emission is called pig nuclear reaction analysis and elastic recoil detection astrophysics this is very useful for this uh, ele- um, uh, this astrophysics experiment. and nowadays they are finding very great uses in ecological research also thank you so this is the uh, end of this lecture